The Zone Coverage Podcast Network. The Zone Coverage Podcast Network. The Andy Luke and Reef Football Machine. Autobots transform. I like this kind of body. Great cash, homie. Starts now. Welcome back to Better Know if you're another Zone Coverage Football Machine on the Zone Coverage Podcast Network. I'm your not slow homo, Sandy Carlson at Andy Carlson Show on the Twitter machine, and I have equity as I roll Yink off my off my court. Oh. Uh, Mark with <laughs> the Wolves playing win and in the wild beginning of their pursuit of the cup, and we're talking about an old guy reading off names at a podium. Yeah. Which is actually way more exciting, but whatever. Uh, joining me, as always, Luke Inman. Follow my Twitter, Luke underscore spin man. Hey. What's up? You're watching basketball. Yeah. We're, this is we're like the watching. second Wolves game yeah. I've watched all year. That's and what? I like the Wolves, but I just haven't been See, that, paying attention. That's why we're turboing, and that's how we roll. Uh, also, sitting in for Arif is Ink Ayende. Follow him on Twitter at Saxon Prince. What's up? Hey, man. Let, yeah, let's get this winning in, you guys. Winning in, baby. Winning yeah. in. So we can win we'll, and in. We'll, win and then play. Actually, I think a Golden State. Win and get slaughtered. Golden State, Minnesota, without Golden State's playing without Curry is an interesting matchup. So we would need to be what seed? The seven? Seven, I believe. Yep. Okay. And then Houston probably whoops you as the number one. Yep. But yep. Curry's out until the second round. Golden State kind of, they got dismantled by oh, the Jazz. Oh, yeah, they did. Which was, Did you see Donovan Mitchell just, he put, what's his name, Draymond Green on his ass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, just bald. Yeah, it was amazing. Also wore a shirt cl- with the definition of a rookie because he doesn't think Ben Simmons yeah, should be in the, the yeah, yeah. <gasps> but that's kind of like, it's also kind of admitting that. You know, you you're kinda, not as good. Yeah. <laughs> I know. So. And they're at Sixers, 15 straight wins or something like that. But. Yeah, I, I don't like how the NBA does that, where if you're injured your rookie year, you can still win rookie of the year. Like, didn't Blake Griffin do that? Yeah. And uh, uh, I mean, it's a little like baseball where you can technically play a certain amount of games. I think it's less than 20 or something, and you still can be a rookie. Um, I don't hate it just because Ben Simmons is a phenomenal player and should be recognized for it. But um, he may be shooting with his wrong hand, too, which is kind of funny. Uh, is that like Tebow, who's actually right-handed? The, yeah, I love that theory. Or maybe that's true. Tebow also double A for the Mets. Dead serious. Uh, hit, hit a, yeah, hit a home yeah, run. Hit a home run. First, pitch. first one, right? Yeah, you know, if I was if it I, first pitch too. Yeah, I think so. Wow. Yeah, if I'm Swinging. a green light, right? If away. I'm a double A pitcher, mm. yeah, I might make it to the show one day. But how about just groove a pitch to make sure I get on ESPN for sure? Right, right. Name recognition. Right. Yeah, just like whatever. I'm on. Yeah, M- Michael Krasinski. That boy. What? Isn't Bill Simmons' kid named Ben Simmons? Yes. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Well, hey, actually, it's it's fine as long as he's good. Bill Simmons' kid seems like someone who will be famous. Like he just seems like a really hilarious little kid who probably will be kind of <laughs> like his dad. <laughs> I don't know. Open phone lines are now. We got him open. Got tons of Twitter questions as well that we'll get to. Uh, we got Luke's Go Get Your Guy. Uh, why don't we warm up with uh, a couple of leftover questions that we had from last week? Uh, we apologize there. We ran overtime. Mock traps are the Lord's work. That's how we go. But uh, from uh, the Bird Abides, how are players going to tackle using their shoulders uh, without getting called for leading with their helmet? Yeah, we did talk about the, the rule changes last right. week. but yeah, that was the whole rule. <laughs> yeah, Sandejo really is going to play like four games next year, not due to injury. <laughs> Just be right, right when he got good, right? Which is unfortunate. Yeah, which is Vikings. But <laughs> you know, the first year of these rules, it's always kind of a learn as you go. It seems mm-hmm. like like it's not like fully in effect until like year two. It seems like like they'll call it a few times just to put it on film for other teams. But um, I'll be interested to see like how hardcore they get into it the first year. Yeah. Do you think it's gonna be like the Seahawks and uh, them being notorious to grab it because like. What are you, you going to do? Call it every time? Right. What do you, yeah. yeah. Well, maybe. But like, like, people forget that uh, a, a rule like this has been in the books since 2013 about mm-hmm. lowering the crown, yeah. uh, it's even for running backs. And yeah. I think Adrian got called for it once. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> remember that. <laughs> he was I, good, though. I remember a friend being like, well, Adrian Peterson's no longer going to be effective. And it's like, okay, well. It's well, yeah, for other reasons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, for Matt Shea underscore Carr, uh, three. Uh, Trident of questions. Uh, who is the best fit for Vikings at cornerback? I hear Derwin James. 
Next. Uh, I'm just kidding. Um, I mean, love Mike Hughes. Mike Hughes is good. Uh, Isaiah I, Oliver. Yeah, Josh Jackson's great. I mean, I don't necessarily know the fit. You all right? Uh, yeah. The time you're Did computer. you – uh, close. All right, I'll help you out. Let's um, keep going. I, the fit, you know, Isaiah Oliver, I love long, right. lanky. Might be more of a cover three guy. Might be more of the Seattle cover three yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, still think you get Zimmer's hands on any one of these kids, they could be special. Get his mitts I think, on him. I, I definitely think Josh Jackson is way more of a Seattle fit than he is for Minnesota, but I would still take him. Mm-hmm. Just because that, that athletic ability is there. Um, leaping ability mm-hmm. is, is going to... Uh, be huge for some of these bigger guys who can out leap a lot of our corners. So. Really, though, yeah. Uh, next up is from, oh, Vanathor, friend of the show. Uh, if Rick gets a call from the Colts uh, offering. Uh, so the third pick in the second round. Yeah, 2 3 and 2 17 for number 30 and the 2019 second rounder. Our 2019 second round? Yeah, do you take that trade? I think. I God, that sounds like a wash. I mean, that, so we get you drop him from thirty to thirty-five, and then you get forty-nine. Yep, which is awesome. Plus, you still have yep. sixty-two. That's great. Yeah, but I got to give up a second-round pick next. I think I would do that. You okay. mm. I'm getting a second-round pick. I guess you have to bank on that next year's pick is going to be late because mm. you're getting this forty-ninth pick. I don't know. I don't know. That's a goofy one. That is a goofy one. Uh, you definitely need, well. It definitely depends if you could, if you could shore up a, a corner, a defensive tackle, offensive lineman, and or tight end with w- yeah, basically one three, of those three, three, out of four, three out of those four. If you could shore them up, then yeah, I think I'd be a little bit more okay with it. I mean, you yeah. are going to have some guys who um, somebody should be there though with that first pick uh, in the second round. Yeah. I mean, Lorenzo Carter could be there in the second round. And for I, sure. And I think he's a very intriguing prospect for the Vikings specifically because, mm-hmm. I mean, he plays opposite a bar. He's he's, yep. a, he's just definitely more of a um, will guy. Stand up. Yeah. yeah. Stand, stand up Played guy. the end at Georgia, but exactly. I think he's more of a stand up, right? But then but then you obviously, you know, if you have to move on from a guy like Eric Hendricks, he can be that guy that can be your middle. Mm-hmm. Um, and all, then also in, you know, nickel packages, if you want to bring a bar to the line, well, now you have, you know, Kendricks and Lorenzo who, you know, can stay in coverage and whatnot. So you have some unique, you know, blitz packages that you could do with Carter as well as, you know, not losing much if, a, let's say, Barr gets mm-hmm. injured again. You don't really have a guy that can, can so, right. you know, really training him both on the Will and Sam's. Pay spots. attention to what position they go with in the second and third round or if they go a wild card in the first round because yeah. that's going to tell me the writing's on the wall for maybe a pending free agent next it, year. Exactly. That they think, ah, I'm probably not going to be able to retain this guy. Call uh, who we got? Oh, this is Wes from Marshall. Wes, Wes, Wes from Marshall. What's going on, man? Hey, I'm uh, just calling in. Hey. Um, I got a question. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking about now that we're getting close and it's kind of the silly season. Mm. What? Uh, who's a who's a prospect that you could see the Vikings drafting based upon kind of the traits they're looking for, the kind of players they covet, who you would really rather they avoid um, in the draft? Hmm. It's a draft in for traits. Uh, there's really any players that I'm just like completely meh about. It's kind of odd. It, it's tough at 30 because you just don't know. There's so many guys that are going to go. You just don't know for sure who's going to be there at 30. Um, but but to answer your question, who don't I want them to look at, right? Is that the, like, which, which guys? Right. Ryan O'Neill. Yeah, Brian O'Neill from Pitt, please stay away from him. No, I'm good on that. Yeah. Um, there's a couple athletic tackles like Tyler Crosby and Colton Miller from UCLA. Super athletic. Colton Miller's 6'8", mm. like 330. Um, I think they got a lot of work to do. do. And, and I'm, I'm bringing those names up because everybody talks about offensive line. Yeah, you know, yeah. We're going to get an offensive line in the first two, first two rounds, including Brian O'Neill. I would like to stay away from those guys. I'd rather get more of a impact year one guy on the interior than try to take a shot on a tackle and then move Remmers inside. I don't know about you guys. I, I don't mind Remmers at tackle at all. I, and I, I don't like, mind I having like, Rashad Hill as a swing tackle backup. Because when's the last time we've had depth? Good depth good at tackle. Depth. And I can draft an, old, uh, an interior alignment um, and and they'll make an impact right away like you saw Pellet fly. Yeah, I like I prefer Remmers. Personally, I prefer Remmers at tackle. I don't want him at guard. And just to have that you know, just a guy who obviously is able to play the the position at a high level, mm-hmm. not have to bring in a rookie who you who are you are going to have some growing pains with. Um, 
I'd much prefer him to keep a right tackle and then, you know, plug in your left guard or right guard, whoever it's going to be. Uh, maybe a guy that you're coveting in the draft or a guy that you, you know, uh, um, God, I'm forgetting these guys' name right now. Uh, Danny Sedora. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. He could be the yep. guy that you're, yep. you know, you've been grooming for a while. So. Yeah. It, it, seems, it seems like, you know, we like Remmers at tackle. And I don't know about you, Wes, but it seems like the Vikings like him at guard. Um, so it seems like they may roll with that. I don't know. So uh, obviously that's going to be a um, something that they got to figure out probably before the draft. They probably already do have it figured out, but it seems like they like him at guard more yeah. than tackle. <laughs> yeah, that's the one that scares me too is that, with all the talk about Remmers at guard, it sounds like they've got some tackle they've pegged as, as being right. good. And if they went if they went Colton Miller at 30 and, and Remmers at guard, that would scare the heck out of me. That would scare the heck out of me too, man. I, there's no way. I'd, I mean, that's almost one of those where it's like you plan on playing Rashad Hill then at right tackle the first year and grooming Colton mm-hmm. Miller. I don't think Colton Miller, especially in a kind of a Super Bowl year that they're kind of pushing the chips in with Kirk Cousins, I'm not having a rookie right tackle like Colton Miller protect uh that blind side and i way. and i really don't want i don't really don't want a, a project no uh um not in the off, first round not in the first round at no, all pick 30 i mean if we were if we were maybe two two three years away from it i'd say yeah go get your project mm-hmm. who you know <laughs> is going <laughs> gyp yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly right <laughs> but right now like I, I want a plug and play type guys you know mm-hmm. like the an impact uh, player right away yeah in yeah. isaiah win type player you know your will hernandez um, but I'm not really looking for a project. If I'm going offense line, I'd rather just go get a, a skill position guy or another defensive toy. What about you, Wes? Who, who you look at? Who do you target and who you banging the table at 34? Oh, Is there well, a guy I, or two? I, the more it's getting closer to this, well, it's the silly season, of course. But it sounds, um, you know, if Isaiah Wynn was there, but I really, I'd like any of those interior guys, James Daniels or. Yeah, or Billy Price Billy would be Price, good. Um, and his Frank Ragnall, any of like, those guys. Yeah, yeah. You you've been saying though that somebody's going to fall. Somebody's going to fall. And with the lot. depth at that interior line, getting somebody in the second round and getting a real steal in the first that's, sounds great to that's me. That's what I'm thinking. I think Rick is fine. I know he wants another guard, but I think he's fine going in the second round with a guard because that's usually where the real run is, anyways. And whether it's like an mm-hmm. Austin Corbett or yeah, like a Frank Rag now could be there. I mean, that would be outstanding at 62, knowing that you got a Josh Jackson cornerback to add to the. Mid- or a whatever, a, T- a Taven Bryan or a Maurice Hurst. Um, I just think it's better value, and I think Spielman's probably going to look that way. Hey, Wes, appreciate you calling in there, man. Yeah, thanks. All right, see you, Wes. Bye. Right. I'm guessing one of the callers couldn't get in with Steve. Cause he, it, it probably was. Cause I'm he, starting to recognize his number. Uh, uh, and he's uh, he's bitching on the old Twitter machine. T- tell him to call in right now. We can get him on. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it goes. That's how it goes, Steve. I just let him know. Yeah. Uh, at School C's, uh, what are y'all thoughts on McGlinchey and Williams' chances that fall to us? Ideal position for each. Would you prefer so McGlinchey or Connor Williams? Who you get? I like. I would like to see Williams at tackle um, and McGlinchey at left guard, probably. They're yeah. They're they're really closely rated for me. I think I like McGlinchey, but he's a right tackle only. Kind of the Jack Conklin thing from Tennessee. Right I keep tackle. going back to. He could play left tackle. I think he's going to be way better at right tackle. Connor Williams. Uh, could be a great left tackle. He showed up under 300 pounds, and he showed up with kind of short, shorter arms, shorter arms than I thought he was going to show up with. I think some people are looking at him as a really athletic guard. You try him out at tackle first because, I mean, you can find guards later on. I think you try him out at tackle. He could be really good. Worst case, though, if something doesn't pan out, you never know with some of these guys. Like Greg Robinson goes two overall. Bust. I mean, there's been some Can't bad Can't miss bust. Greg Robinson. Can't miss, dude. So if for some reason Connor doesn't pan, you slide him into guard. I think he'll be a great athletic guard. Hey, caller, who we got? Hey, how you guys doing? Stevie. Hey, Steve, Stevie, sound melancholy. What's up, dude? I've had the stomach flu for the last five days. Oh, I'm just getting oh, over it. Oh, sorry, it's like dude. the black plague in my house over here. That sucks, so. dude. That, that's the best way to lose weight quick. You must be going to prom. Uh, uh, uh. I've actually lost 10 pounds in five days. I'm not even kidding. No, I believe like, it, dude. Like, literally. Like, like one of those I where you're... like, water, and that's about it. Where your stomach... You I'm, can feel your stomach wringing itself out, and there's nothing in your stomach anymore. Uh. I've had it. Pretty much. My, my nephew got me sick, but, you know, hey, at least before the draft, that's a good time. We least got two weeks, right? Okay. So, are, you, are, you, are, you, are you posted up watching the T-Wolves in Wild right now? 
I'm watching the Wild. Uh, the Wolves dress me out too much. Can't do it. Dress <laughs> you out the, too much. The only I, image I, just, I have. I'm is. sorry. You know, I know you. I can hear you in the background. I just, I can't do it, bud. I don't, I, I don't know. blame you. Wait, how, how is basketball stressful? Because it's, it's the Wolves. It's Thibodeau. He's not. He just. He's not doing good. This for the better of the, the team. He's I don't a, know, dude. I just. I don't know. So. I kind of figure maybe if they lose, they fire him. I don't know. I I, I, don't I will tell you, he's not going anywhere now with them. They so. will not. They will not fire him if they lose. That, However, that's a lot he, of money uh, for Glenn Taylor to eat. Yeah, it, <laughs> he uh, he probably wouldn't be too thrilled with that. I'll I'll, I'll say this: I, they're looking fine. I mean, they, they are chancy, but uh, what a fall yeah. from grace! They were a number three seed for most of the season, and obviously a very yeah, close yeah. roast. But you're looking at a commercial there, oh. Inca. You're okay, let's get some draft right talk, now. enough Wolves talk, though. If they win, hey, great. If they're not, whatever. I'm already under the wild, too. But they'll <laughs> lose, too, probably. All right, that's that's, that's sports that's mentality, Steve, right? Uh, so I got, I, Luke, I got, <laughs> I got a couple names I want to run by. You're kind of underrated. I want to hear a little. I, well, first off, uh, uh, I, I, know, you know, I, I know more about Austin Corbett now, the kid from Nevada. Do yep. you think he'll be there at 62, or do you think he might have to trade up to get him? I think he could definitely be there at 62. I know he's getting a lot of buzz, and he's really good. I think uh, the my, my crew, NDT scouting team has him as like a first-round type of player, but I don't know if the league's on that high of a level on him. The other thing is, just in general, Interior lineman run go to second yeah, and third round. Second, it's second. We saw it last yeah. year. You know, Cam Robinson kicked yeah. it off, and then it was Deion Dawkins and Ethan Posick and Dan Feeney. We had to trade up for Pat Elflin. I think you know, middle of the second round, uh, middle of the third round is where a lot of these kind of guys are going to go. Is he going to be there at sixty two? <sighs> coin flip, man. Maybe maybe a little bit less than a coin flip. I'd say maybe a forty percent chance. But we were just talking. I was just talking to Yinka. You go get a skill position guy or a, a, just a BPA, like somebody falls in your lap, like uh, Maurice Hurst falls in your lap, and then you go get an Austin yeah. Corbett. That's a great combo and that's great value. And I think Spielman's fine on getting an interior guy in the second round. Okay, I got two more. Fair, I'll let you go. Mm-hmm. So I want to know. I've heard about this Naheem the Hines, the, the running back. Yeah. I don't know a lot about him. Do you know a lot about this kid? Everyone's kind of touting him the last week or so. Uh, He's a uh, running 2.0. back, I think, from North Carolina State, something Jarek like that. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, small dude, super quick. Um, you know, for me, he doesn't stick out as much as some of the other guys, just because, just like every year, Steve, it's a loaded running back class in that like third, yeah. fourth round. Dude, Kalen Balaj, Arizona State, carrying. Johnson, Auburn, Mark Walton, Miami, John Kelly, Tennessee. There's tons of them, dude. A- Akram Wadley, Iowa. Naheem Hines, though, he's a burner, man. He's a speedster. And really, though, when you look at what we need now that Jet's gone, you need a third down guy who can catch. Not that Cook can't, yeah. not that Murray necessarily couldn't, but I think that's just the depth guy you want just in case somebody goes down. I think that's more of a John Kelly kind of guy. Um, Rash- R- Rashad Penny, I love, but I'm not sure he's great at pass blocking. Naheem Hines definitely could yeah. be in play, man. I wouldn't be, uh, I would not be mad at all about Naheem Hines. They're, uh, what well, my point I is, they're all really, I mean, they're really solid in the third, fourth round. Yeah, John Kelly, I heard him from Tennessee. Did they have him for a top 30 or they met with him in the combine, didn't they? Ooh, good question, dude. There. I don't have it Co- pulled Combine, up. not top 30. Yeah. yeah, good good call, though, yeah. Okay. Keep tabs on those. Yeah. I, I remember like hearing the name, it. but I got one more for you. This kid I've been hearing more about, this P.J. Hall kid from St. Houston State. What can you tell me about him? I heard he's kind of blown up too the last few weeks. I've, I've, I've heard that as well. I haven't watched him yet, so I'll probably get after him this week. But um, somebody, yeah. I don't know if it was on Twitter or for, for again, it was um, Kyle Krabs from NDT Scouting. Somebody mentioned it. Maybe it's John Ledyard or JR on Twitter. Yeah. I can't remember. I might have saw the same thing you did, um, perked me up, and uh, I'll check him out this weekend. Because I know Reese not in tonight. Hey, how's it going, Yanka? But hey, how you doing, Steve? <laughs> but uh, I know he had, I know he had good numbers. I know that because I, 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 it was kind of like the, the com. He's the numbers guy, you know. But I, I know he had good drills. I know that. I'll, I was wondering more about him. I'll give you know. one instead of him because I don't know. I don't, you know, I just don't know enough about him to speak to him. Um, Matthew Thomas, okay. linebacker from Florida State. Ar- Arif and I uh, were talking about this guy. Have you ever heard it? Nobody's heard of this guy. Have you heard of this guy? What's his name? Matthew Thomas. He's a linebacker from Florida State. Either of you guys heard of him? I haven't no. heard the name. No, okay. I haven't heard of him. He's no. got some off-the-field stuff, so he didn't play a ton. At Florida State? When he did play, he led the Seminoles in tackles, <laughs> and Arif did some digging. All his athletic um, testing fits what the Vikings look for in an athletic linebacker on day three. I kind of was sold okay. um, from the is stats. He a small, is he like a smaller size, like weak side linebacker, or what's the size? Mm, like I'll six have to pull foot? It up. Oh, he's definitely over six foot, yeah. 
Um, but I don't okay. know. Yeah, not, not too many. Uh, who, who's that? Oh, Zach Thomas. The guy who's like 5'9". Five, five nine. Yeah. No big deal. <laughs> I remember him. Yeah, I, that name rings a bell. All right, I got one more for you. Sorry, before I let you go here. Um, so, I, I, Andy, I, I listened to your Daniel House this morning. Great work, as always. Love yep, his work, you. too. You know, love his insight. Um, so, Lorenzo Carter, I know he's one of Yinka's, or no, he's one of uh, JR's boys, too, but do you think he like feels like more of like an edge type role or can he be like a linebacker kind of like that Anthony Barlow? I don't know. What do you think? Steven Fairness. Just curious. He could be Yankee's boy too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, sorry, I think I mean, <laughs> he could purely be that sort of hybrid role. Like you could bring him in. He could play some uh, edge. He could play some D end. He could play that the heir apparent to bar. Like if he can't retain bar, yeah. uh, I don't know why he wouldn't, why, why he wouldn't, but I mean the, the kid's an athletic freak and versatile. And I mean, he is a type of, he's, just like a Mike Zimmer guy. You, you know, you just look at a kid and you'd be like, yeah, that's a Zimmer guy. Steve. Steve. <laughs> I like it. Steve. Okay. So I, I've been hearing more. I, I, I've always heard of him, but I just, I'm curious what he would fill in the role. You know, this is he, he's more, he's more of a DN or like, I guess off the ball linebacker. I don't really know where you'd fit, but I don't know, I'm just curious. So. Steve. Okay. Luke, g- 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 go ahead. Sorry. Math- Matthew Thomas. You ready for this? Florida state. Yeah. Led the Seminoles in tackles when he was actually on the field. Six foot three, two thirty two. Uh wow. four That's five four five eight forty. <laughs> wow. Forty one wow. and a half inch vert. <laughs> what? And a six eight wow. five three cone. Really good, dude. What's his really off the field crap? Uh, is that DUI? Well, is he slapping baby mama? What's his off the field it's for a school, I assume it's got baby mama drama or something. It's a you know, Florida school like Antonio Cowboy's got something wrong with them, you know, right? Or Something's going on, so just curious <laughs> what the off the field stuff is. Steve, how do you know it all by chance? <laughs> um, no, that's the thing about it, and that's why I think one of the reasons why nobody's talking about him. Nobody knows what happened. Like, yeah, I've done, I tried to do some digging. You can go try to Google it too, but Antonio Callaway, yeah. we know what happened, and it's not great. Thomas, it could be yeah. worse than that, or it could be maybe not as big of a deal. I can't find any information about it. Huh? Okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay, guys, we'll have a good night, and I'll talk to you later. All right, Steve, thanks for Thank calling, you. dude. Yep. Take care, bud. All right, man. Bye. Cool. Baby mama drama. Baby you got the wild drama. going on in your iPhone, or you got the T-Wolves yeah. going on the yeah. iPad? Yeah. Dude? Yeah. <laughs> this is legit, dude. Sorry, Andy. All right, we're good. We can all see it. Uh, at at all Andy. unit. Uh, nah, I don't care about hockey. Uh, with the new lowering... Uh, oh. <laughs> Fits in with the new Lord of the Helmet rule. Uh, you know, Vikings Twitter. How much will it impact Sendejo's game? Y'all think it's anything to be worried about impact draft strategy at all? I can't. Things will be fine. <laughs> they change yeah. a rule. We have to dump Sendejo. <laughs> like they don't even. <laughs> oh my God. No, it'll they be fine. Like, try him. Yeah, like even now, even before like the new rule, like they, it's hard to play safety. There's if there was one position, and we talked about some random like t- what if they went tight end? Yeah. Yeah. If there was one position, I just can't see them taking one early it's a safety mm. and not to say that sendejo's that good well, but, but he was Reed. great last year yeah i mean i take i'm i'm not saying there's not good safeties in yeah. that draft i'm just saying i can't see them taking a safety in the first two three rounds that yeah. uh at sweet skull do you guys would be a shocker do you guys remember the game nfl street hell yeah, yeah if yeah. so wasn't as good as blitz who would be your seven man squad for the vikings on the current roster seven guys you need to play both sides of the ball style points count <sighs> It was good. Hunter, Everson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hunter and Everson. Yep. Bar. Yep. Bar could be my Harry. tight end. Harry. Harry. Harry could be my tight end, too. Um, Cook. Could Cook play defense anywhere? Cook Dalvin could do whatever he wants. Yeah. Okay, so Dalvin. Yeah, so that's five. D- we said okay. Diggs, right? No, Diggs. No, Diggs, Diggs will be corner, right? Yeah. Um, and then Elfline for shits and gigs? Or? Well, he's going to play quarterback. Oh, we need somebody it, to play quarterback. It would have been McKinnon. Slaughter. <laughs> Do we pick Slaughter? I would have been McKinnon. Damn it. It would have been McKinnon. Oh, that would have been so sweet. I mean, Damn. we could pick Cousins. Cheryl's? Cousins would be a liability on defense. Can you imagine? Huge liability. Who's our, who's our new emergency QB now? Yeah. Because Jerry's is gone. Right. Um, it's just a <laughs> Simeon and Slaughter. I don't know. Um, shit. I'm sure Kendall Wright played high school quarterback. Probably. Yeah, they all do. Now, I, I'll pick Sluter because I feel like Sluter is uh, just like young enough. Sluter he, can just rip it. Yeah. Like, he, he, he just screw around on defense. He'd be like, whatever. Lower my shoulder. Don't so, care. who do we got? Rip it out. All right. So, Slu- Sluter at QB slash strong side linebacker. Uh, Hunter, Everson, Barr, uh, Harrison, and uh, Dalvin, and Diggs. I like it's not it. bad. That's dirty. We'll take that. 
I'm in. Uh, Matt P underscore BU. Uh, thoughts on taking Goddard or Gusecki at 30, moving up in round two for Ragnow or Price? I think that's a dream draft. I say that again. Thoughts on taking Goddard or Gusecki at 30 and then moving up? I would lo- If yeah. we were to somehow still get Price or Rag- like Ragnow might still be there at 62. Mm-hmm. Price is going to be long gone. Price yeah, could Price be going to be gone. Price could be gone by the Bengals, yeah. I heard, at 20 or 21, whatever their pick is. Yeah. Um, so that is a dream draft. You can get Price or the Hernandez or yeah. you know any of those interior guys for sure. Say hypothetical spot where you take the tight end at 30 and then price is available at the top of the second, but it costs you both two and three. I think we're at that point where we push our chips all in. You can yeah. have my third. Yeah. If you're going to give me price and Godert. Yeah. Oh, my Because if you give away two and three, you don't have four. So you're not picking it until midday right. three. Yeah. Right, right. But, I mean, what else do you really need? Like, how happy are you with price and Godert? For good. Go nuts, dude. Could you give a? You could still. Could you give a? Uh, actually, that wouldn't work. Never mind. Yeah, I was gonna say you could get a. a it would take a, Treadwell for a two. <laughs> I'll take, I'll take uh, a four for Treadwell at this point. Oh, I, I, give I'm me my four, four back, man. I, uh, all right, right now. Uh, conditional six for Treadwell. Condition that he has to play. He no. has to have over. 40 catches. And that, I'll just keep him at that point. But yeah. but in my head, like a fourth's that much better. I guess. I mean, but it's we're at that point. <sighs> It's unfortunate. But it whatever. is unfortunate. Uh, Dave from MN. Odds the Vikings draft a defensive player with their first pick. I would say 45% to 50. I'm, at, I'm probably at coin a 30, flip? 30 to 40. Corner D tackle. I'm thinking Lawrence of Maurice Parker. Hurst or Taven Bryanish yeah. or a um, uh, one of these corners that fall in your lap. They're like, how did Jair Alexander fall this far? Or something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Didn't you hear Jair Alexander may have killed the guy? Oh, that's right. Dude. <laughs> Start leaking. Yeah, start leaking it. It's like, we will not take a murder at 15. 30? 30? <laughs> well, risk reward? I'm the, Value, man. What's the chart say? There's two sides of the story. Uh, also from Dave, uh, over under number of linemen drafted, uh, both offense and defense. So I'll put For it. us? Uh, I'll put it over under two and a half. I would say, oh, I was going to say three. I'd say, yeah, I'd probably say three. Two offensive, we'll be, one defense? Um, I, th- I think ideally, yes. Um. Then what? Yeah, you got to get one D tackle in there because Sheldon's on a one year deal, and you mm-hmm. just don't know about um, Jaleel, Jaleel Johnson. Although yeah. it looks in, it looks good, you just don't know. So you got to get at least one D tackle. Yeah, I think I would rather because have... Shamar Stefan and Tom Johnson are gone. Yeah. Like you got to get at least one D tackle. Because think about roster construction. You, you're only carried like max nine O linemen, probably right. eight, maybe nine. Right. Um, and like. I know people want to go heavy on O line early, but there's just not enough room. I was going to say with Danny Sadora and yeah. now Tom Compton and those guys, maybe it's more likely that they go two D linemen and one O lineman. To yeah. be honest, well, you also but have to, you get one good O. You also have to consider. I think the Vikings also want to make sure they upgrade. You know, having a starting five that's like no question about yes. that their guys a, a are good one, a good one. Where yeah, you still have some depth. You still have mm-hmm. your Rashad Hills. You still have your Danny Sadoras and stuff. But it's no longer oh well, it's kind of back and forth between. Uh, this guy and this guy. It's like no, this is our this is clear our cut. Clear no cut. doubt. It's not like exactly. Danny Sedora and Tom Compton can't battle. Exactly. No, we mm-hmm. have Billy Price yeah. and he's our guy. He's our guy. Pencil him in. David yeah. Yankee, pencil him in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, say you do come out out of uh, this with a starter. Say whether it's a Billy Price, Hernandez, whoever. Yeah. Uh, so you got Reef, Elfline, Remmers. They're like the Reef. only three. Elfline, Remmers. Yeah. They're the only three like cemented starters. Yep. That rookie thrown in there, and then at the other guard spot, you could have Isadora. You have Easton, who started last year. Uh, Tom Compton. Uh, I think you, you He's want a good that body. Yeah. You, you want that veteran uh, value in there. Mm-hmm. You get Rashad Hill, and then. Then, I mean, they like Aviante Collins, clearly. Yeah. Cornelius Edison's still chilling. Like you said, there's whatever. bodies, man. Yeah. There's there's young bodies, too. Yeah. I mean, even Compton's, what, 26, oh, 27? We didn't even talk about Josh Andrews coming over from the Eagles. Yeah, Josh Andrews. There's first, bodies. The first guy that John D. Flippa makes a move for. Yeah. Go get your yeah. guy. <laughs> go, get, go get my guy. <laughs> um, oh. That's why I said, again, with no Shamar Stefan, yeah. no Tom Johnson, nobody's really realized how big of an impact that's going to have mm. on depth and that rotation. They should probably be drafting two defensive tackles this draft. Yeah. Oh, especially since Zimmer says, oh, I want, you know, I want to rotate more. That's on me. You know, Edge, I'm fine with because yeah. I like Steven Weatherly and, and Bauer yeah. enough. D-tackle, I'm worried. And future WWE champion, uh, Afedi Odenaba. Afedi. I like Afedi, too. Yeah. What, what does WWE name be? Um... Because <laughs> I, I don't think you can straight up take Nigerian Nightmare. Although, that would be pretty sweet. That would be probably just match made in heaven, right? 
That'd be perfect. Or Odenabo oh, would just be good. Debo. <laughs> <laughs> Debo. Just keep forming it and tweaking it until it's Debo. Uh, from at Alec to Brzezinski, uh, who's the guy with average subpar workout numbers that has impressed you enough on tape to take a chance on? Same question, but flipped. Great workout numbers. Bad tape. Um, talked about Matthew Thomas. Yeah. It's a late round guy, but I'm really intrigued about him all of a sudden. Um, a guy, another linebacker, really sluggish, but it's going to be an NFL player, is Josie Jewell from mm-hmm. Iowa. Yeah. Uh, reminds you of um, that Paul Pozlowski type of guy where it's like pretty yeah. sluggish, not great numbers, but he's just always around the ball. And he'll probably never make a Pro Bowl, but he'll probably be a special team stud and probably maybe a starter at some point for a few years, too. Probably get him in like the fourth, fifth round. I haven't dug nearly deep enough uh, to to have that, but uh, I do think that there are a lot of some some projects definitely that you could get in the you know another Daniil Hunter type guy mm-hmm. that's just waiting for you in the third round that I think you could uh, potentially grab. Um, but just this draft just feels like it's it's. One of those go get your guys type draft, especially it, it, in that, this that class time. you're talking about. Yeah, it definitely, absolutely, definitely in the top top end when you you know you have some holes that you mm-hmm. need to fill. Fill, just go get them. It's all in all, and people don't like to hear this. It's not that great of a draft class. Mm-hmm. So that's why you're going to see like a Quentin Nelson go really high. You know, it's a yeah. guard and, and Barkley. Yeah. You're talking about the two best players in the class is a running back and, and a, a guard. guard. Yeah. So this class is not that great. I love the cornerback depth. But for the most part, I'm with you. You could like sitting there in the second round, and you know you you got two, three, got whatever. Just go get the guy that maybe he's not rated as high as some of the other guys, but clearly you like better. But that's than kind of why. Else. That's why I kind of want the Vikings to trade down because it's like you know if a guy that you don't really aren't really in love with at 30, mm-hmm. you know the draft is a crapshoot. Go get two or three guys who at other, at other positions yep. that you you think could still fill in holes, could still be guys you can develop, right. and uh, let you know some impending free agents that you you know might mm-hmm. think you know we could probably do without this guy. Agreed. We have, we have a question from uh, one Tim Fakeless, I yeah. believe. Yeah. Timmy. Timmy. Where, where did Vince Young go? <laughs> Is he had a plane by himself that he bought out? Oh, uh, TGI Fridays. <laughs> oh no! Oh, Cheesecake Factory. That's the place where he racked up like a ten thousand dollars bill. Do you remember that he he bought out a plane, like a yeah. commercial jet? But there were like four people that got tickets before him. Yeah. So they get on the plane. Do you know about this? No. And it's and it's like four or five people and Vince Young. <laughs> <laughs> wait, so wait, he didn't rent it out for like his crew? No, he didn't, he didn't like young. he didn't charter it. He straight up just bought all what? The why do you get like why does he I, that that, that's one way to get a private ish plane? <laughs> <laughs> Pay like a little bit more. Are for you using the class. bathroom? No, yeah. come on, man. Uh, r- random. So, with the measurables, uh, what do you guys think the record for bench at the combine is? 52? Yinga? 51, I think it is. 51. Nailed nice. it. Nice. Something called Justin Ernest. Ernest yeah. Uh, undrafted 1999 at Eastern Kentucky. Jeez. 51 bench reps. So he ran a 47940. Wow. As a, as, wow. As a 6'3, 284 pound D tackle. Dang. Uh, undra- that dude would go first round in oh, yeah, today's day and age. Uh, undrafted. You suck, but he went first round. <laughs> yeah. yeah, undrafted cup of coffee with the Saints in, in camp. Undrafted? Undrafted. Wait, did you say small school? Eastern school? Kentucky, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, we, we have to pay out. That was back, it's it funny, because that was back when they had like 15 rounds, too. Yeah. How did you not get drafted? Also, we have to pay homage. Vernon Davis. Vern was nuts. 6'3", oh. 254. A shredded 254, by the Ran way. Ran a four three eight forty. Good God. A seven-second three-cone. Yeah, uh, forty-two inch vertical. For, he was forty-two inch. <laughs> I mean, vert. I mean, why wouldn't you just try out for an NBA team just to like see if you can do that? Because I swear yeah. he could have. I like all these guys. Wish they were in the NBA, except they can because there's no such thing as six-four power forwards anymore. Mm. Yeah, you. I mean, they're going small ball. Yeah. Ah man, what I was his bench? That. He should play big 33. three. He should play in the big three. three. Yeah. Tell me you wouldn't watch that. <laughs> Yeah, who would be the the NFL's best big three team? Oh man, Golden that's State. such a good question. What? Oh, you said NFL? No, no, no. Yeah, it, it, yeah three NFL players. Yeah, three NFL players three. to make a big three team. Mm. Gronk. Gronk's a good call. I'm trying to. Th- 
Who's like the long, lanky KD kind of guy in the league right now? Who's I guess long, well, the easy lanky. answer would be Jimmy Graham, wouldn't it? Although Jimmy, he's kind of old. I don't think Jimmy has that How about, uh, yeah, I don't explosion know. Ooh, anymore. Uh, Gusecki. Gusecki. I was thinking Travis Gusecki Kelsey, Kelsey maybe. I don't know. We're all it's a lot of tight ends. ends. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tight what ends. about non-tight ends? Like, what, what receiver super fast that just would, I don't know. I don't know. That's tough. I'd have to does, sit down. Does Nate Robinson rosters. count? You got to try it with the Seahawks. I was going to oh, ask yeah. you. I was gonna, like, <laughs> who was the basketball player that went and tried, played, tried playing cornerback? Yeah. And that was him. Odell would be pretty crazy. Odell, Odell. would be Odell would be fun. Odell yeah. Would be fun, dude. Odell would throw down some oh, weird yeah, dunks, absolutely. dude. And then, like, get caught in the net. <laughs> 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 what percentage of NFL players do you think can dunk? A lot, probably. Yeah, because who was it who used to dunk over? Was that Jimmy Graham who used to yeah. dunk over? Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, I would say 45%. Yeah. 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 I mean, you have to think through like linemen and stuff yeah, yeah. that aren't going to, but. Well, I mean, some linemen are are absolute physical yeah. freaks. Yeah. If you look at Corey Stringer, rest in peace, like he could dunk, uh, you know, flat footed, just like standing under a basket, jump, dunk. And yeah, he was 6'8, but I mean, the dude was 380. Does, does Harrison Smith have sweet fundamentals, like defends the hell out of someone? And like, I don't see him as, you know, like a knockdown shooter or yeah. something, but. He's got know. a good baby I'm J sure from 15 feet. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure he's good. How about Stephon the, Diggs would be interesting. Super fast. How about like, the Rams? You get Cooper Cups, your quick little white boy, run, John Stockton throwing dimes, and then you he got has to wear Gurley. The, he has to wear the nut hugger shorts. Gurley, got, Gurley, yeah, Todd is, Gurley, yeah. and then is there one more on the Rams? Gur- Gurley is how about just a big three. How about like just Aaron Donald? Donald. Yeah. Aaron Donald down low. <laughs> you just give me Aaron Donald down low. I'll take that. So Cup, Donald, and and uh, and uh, oh, that Brandon Cooks now. Wow. Does he train with knives? <laughs> right. Aaron Donald. So Todd Gurley, I think that's mine. Cooper Cup, Todd Gurley, and... Uh... All right. Uh, well, this is a little bit dated, from, but from PFF uh, from 2016, uh, top 10 players from then who play college basketball, Vincent Jackson, Antonio oh, Gates, Jackson, or, yeah. uh, Quentin Rollins, he oh, has wow. played at Miami, Ohio, Jimmy Graham. Yeah, he's good, too. Oh, Julius Peppers. j Pep. He can still ball. Uh, Martellus Bennett played two years on Texas A&M. I, I bet he can play. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Connor Barwin, Darren Fells, Julius, Barwin, wow. Julius Thomas, Darren Fells, and uh, I guess Gerard Johnson played at uh, Texas A and M. That's a guy too. Yeah, <laughs> he was bad. He was really bad. <laughs> he was not good. Uh, not great, Bob. Another from uh, Paps uh, 003. I'm confident. Del- Ooh, they score. Just a nice little three in the corner from Wiggy Wiggins. Wig when, again. when Wiggins is engaged, he's scary. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> why did? Potential. Why do you even have to? Like, why is that a thing? When Wiggins is engaged, he, he he's literally good. he's literally just. We're like in the a, NBA now, dude. Like we call him Fortnite Wiggins because we're pretty <laughs> sure it's because he's playing Fortnite all, all night. But w- okay, yeah, yeah. No, I mean it's I I don't know. It's something he's got to work on. He's getting a lot of money. Uh, Pape Solo 3. Uh, I'm confident Delvin's going to be a beast in the future. That said, would it make sense to ease him in when he's back in terms of health? Maybe try to keep him fresh uh, for uh, knocking out wood postseason. I-, I would those first four games. Yeah. I'd not sprinkle him in, but I would definitely give him a lighter load for sure. I mean, Latavius Murray's earned that, too, to where he can kind of rock the whole load. I'm mean, very interested to see who their three is going to be. But, uh, um, that kind of is a, a pending factor. You know, when you got a Jerk McCannon, hell yeah, sprinkle him in. You yeah. know, take it easy these first four games for sure. When you don't, uh, maybe a little different story, but I'm I'm all for that of starting a little slow. I could definitely see them. I've said this. I know that running back, you could get whatever, but I I could see a third round running back falling that you just, it's like, yeah. hey, it's just so athletic where it's just like if you need to if you need to ease a guy in, take or, one every year, dude. Because yeah, yeah. the value in the third, fourth, fifth it's, at running it's back just, is it's just always fan, there. It's fantastic. So just I mean, take you, one. Just you might find a shot. guy, and if you can keep rotating these guys, you might never have to pay a running back ever. Right? You no. Know? So right. I, that really is the smart thing to do if you're a team, right? Yeah, you always sure. want a cheap quarterback. You got to be careful about old running backs. Yeah. 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 It's, a, it's a brutal league. Well, running back. It just is. Well, the average lifespan of running back is like two years. It's insane. But yeah. running back, yeah, specifically, yeah. I mean, you, you, ideally, you're not paying a Todd Gurley twenty million. You know, I mean, that hurts your. How, cap. how much? You're, how much does the McKinnon you're Kareem Hunt? Uh, seriously, nothing. how much does McKinnon hurt San Francisco down the line? You, they have their quarterback. You talked about maybe a team better. No, I don't no, think. Not really. Running at all. backs don't I mean, make that. And, the, much. and, and that's why. That and that's why. Much. That's why. Like it. You know, when I have these conversations with people who are just like, well, don't pay a running back that much money. It's like you have to understand comparatively to. Uh, the 
sheer amount of like cap share mm-hmm. that a quarterback or these top uh, like corners, the percentage of apprentices the, like to even, your position even the top uh, running back mm-hmm. is only making pennies a percentage true um to that's what some of these like there's only a couple Todd Gurley's and Zeke will get paid and some other ones and it gives it will gives Zeke get paid though paid. yeah I don't know yeah well, you know I mean, because uh, they had DeMarco Murray for years I mean right. granted he can only run downhill but but this is a top five pick they use you protect yeah. your investments yeah, you, do. you know uh, what I mean DeMarco oh, is in a what are, yeah over under 12 a year for Lev next year over <sighs> Which okay. that that should tell you where we're at because we're talking about Le'Veon Bell making twelve mil, yay or nay? Sure. Quarterbacks sure. make twenty, twenty five, twenty eight. And, and the o- average OBJ might two. make twenty. The and, average ones, not the best at one. Yeah. Best at his and we're talking about Le'Veon Bell, the number one running back. Yeah. yeah. How much making does Bortles 12? make this, Bortles? this year? Yeah. How much will he make? He, he, he makes twenty two, twenty five. I think. I and, and, yeah. literally we're, and literally, and literally, you listed that as a team that needs a quarterback. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, as a missing piece. Yeah. And well, it's funny because you know we're sweating. It's like. Le'Veon Bell, 12, 14, I don't know. And then, you know, Sammy Watkins getting 16 at the drop of a hat. That was crazy, though. <sighs> That's not... It's why that it's why happen. it's so important to, you know, these teams who are in search of a quarterback. If you if you can say that you are a few years away, just build up that defense, build up the yep. offensive weapons and whatnot. Try to and find then one. If, try to find Keep going. Their, their Every quarterback. Year. And then once you find that guy... Then you need to start maneuvering things around him. You know, you can give then, him more weapons, then, or you can really spruce up that defense. Then you find some vet guys who can play right now. I don't have to waste two, three years to develop a Daniel Hunter, even though I know he's going to be great. But I need guys that can win right now. But you see what more teams are doing now mm-hmm. is more so they're understanding that the draft is a crapshoot. For sure, trade away your picks. Give me JJ for, for a fifth round pick. Trade away your picks for guys who are proven talent. Because no at the doubt. end of the day, the hit rate for first round run, uh, wide receivers is thirty mm-hmm. percent. Should I? Trade away a first round pick for Odell Beckham Jr. Two first round picks for Odell. Absolutely, I would. Yeah. yeah. The the thing and the kicker is going back to if you can hit on these guys though, not having to pay the Odell Beckham contracts, not having to pay these big boy contracts because it's a really it's a great move. It's just ultra aggressive and very short term. Mm-hmm. Your team's gonna blow. Your roster will be blown up in two years. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and then it's like, well. I hope we won a Super Bowl. Eagles, it worked. Will it work for the Rams? We'll find out. They have an endowment can sue an Aaron Donald. <laughs> Dude, how they have Marcus that? Peters and Chris it's, Harris. It's, or it keep to leave. Rams don't make any sense. It, it's nuts, it's dude. It's crazy. And what pick do they have? I mean, not that they need picks. The playoffs are going to be unreal, right? Assuming will. people stay healthy. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think they don't have a first. They don't have a second. Oh, they have the Cooks. They're pretty oh. Cooks. All right, so the preseason schedule is out. Yeah, uh, we oh, face okay. yeah. the Rams games. have eight pick eighty seven. That's yep. it. Denver yep. first first game. Yep. Uh, then at Jackson, uh, home to Jacksonville, uh, home versus Seattle, and then uh, at Tennessee final week. I feel like they scheduled at Tennessee every single year just because of the barbecue. Why not? Or just because never yeah, been in Tennessee. in Tennessee. I'd be down. Yeah, I think we should do it. Zone coverage machine trip. Let's go. It, you, you, that's a write off. <laughs> <That's a write-off. laughs> what you do is you write it off. off. <laughs> also, Case Keenum revenge game. Preseason. He's getting revenge. Get some. No, no, he's not going to start that game. You won't even see him. Is Christian Ponder coming back into the league anytime soon? I don't know. He's got he's double dad duty right he, now. Yeah, I was going to say, is he, is he okay with being scout Mr. And Mr. Dad? Yeah. yeah. Or Mrs. Dad, I should say. Yeah, Mrs. <laughs> dad. Right? Glad that he found peace. <laughs> <laughs> I like how they had like a Minnetonka. Remember, someone made a mention of the house in Minnetonka, and she's like, "Oh yeah, that's our that's our Minnetonka house." Like, I we haven't lived there for years. <laughs> All right, oh, okay, All right. Still paying mortgage on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who, who's living there? there. <laughs> like tips? Or like, well, who's I know. There? I know a lot of these people. What they'll do is like. Um, you know, they'll just have some, they'll rent it out to yeah. someone to just live. Yeah. And then while well, they're going back and forth, but like if you just have an empty house, like, what are you, yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> no, for sure. Just Airbnb. Uh, what, do you, what do you think uh, Christian Ponder's go to like uh, meal is for the kids? Like, what's he good at cooking? Mac and cheese. <laughs> yeah, mac and cheese with the hot dog slices, dude. Yeah. Lunchables. Ponder I don't does know. not man. strike me as a chef. No. I a good dad, I think, but yeah, yeah not a yeah, chef. Yeah. Uh, halfway th- PB halfway through the mac and cheese, he just runs away from the pocket. So whatever. <laughs> <I'm out. laughs> Can't handle this. He doesn't break up the cheese. Remember yeah. how the cheese used to like build up on one side? <laughs> <laughs> so far, because uh, I feel like quarterback busts for all fan bases, like they turn into good comedic fodder. Like Raiders fans are... Are, are are jovial about Jamarcus Russell. Like we obviously give T Jack and Ponder stuff, but 
Teddy's different because of the injury. Oh, it feels bad. Yeah. Like, like if Teddy was just straight up terrible, then he would be added to the list of guys you can make fun of. But, but with the injury, it's like, well, how, did, how does hurts. Teddy capitalize on that? If like, if his career really does end in a few years, like how does he capitalize on that here? Do you think he's like in commercials? Do you think he actually has a show? Like what does uh, he goes full Joe censor like Ben Warber Bob? <laughs> I'm just trying to think. Like, people want Teddy in their life. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, like <laughs> I want Teddy in my life. I tell him to just be a great ambassador, get involved in the community. Yeah. 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 Like, li- Join the NFLPA. Like, it says a lot uh, that a kid that young has made such a positive impact on three separate communities, so Miami, Louisville, and up here. Do you think a restaurant would work for Teddy? Teddy's Tacos. <sighs> Teddy's Tacos. Restaurants uh, are always so dicey with a f- the a food truck. A food truck? Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. I could see that. What's the best food truck you guys have ever been to? We went, when we were in Denver, there was like yeah. a food truck, like fair type of thing. It was yeah. only like seven food trucks, but it was all like uh, enclosed in, um, sheltered off, and that was some of the best food mm. I've had in a while. I mean, yeah. like finger food, you know, like yeah. quick, easy grab finger food, but that was outstanding, man. Yeah, okay. Well, I, it, it's um, down on uh, uh, Broadway Street, but uh, there's usually every year there's like this uh, artist um, festival or whatever huh. that, that kind of comes out or whatever. You know what I'm talking about? No, but I, I live near there. Yeah. It's, huh. So it's like um, 621 Brewery or something like that. 612 Brewery? Brewery. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they had like a really nice like... Um, uh, like a burrito or a taco or something. Ooh, I gotta sand. check that out. And it was it was phenomenal. And I uh, I got this uh, like it, I, like a taco burrito thing. They put like huh. it together. And yeah, that's like, it was actually really good. Uh, Des Moines. We were there for a bachelor party. Wow. Went saw Des Moines the, for a bachelor party. We okay. saw the Iowa Cubs, which was pretty good. I love it. Uh, there there was like a. Uh, like a gyro place, like a Greek food truck. Hell yeah! That, oh, I, I, they God. should do that in Minnesota. Because I was going to say, there's good pizza, which is not surprising. Um, <laughs> and then I'm trying to think, anything kind of baked yeah. is usually pretty good, yeah. like a pot pie. That's random. Iowa has a pretty strong Greek uh, like presence. That's, that's crazy. Like I love gyros. Gyros are some of my favorite. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm surprised Dino's doesn't do a food truck. Probably should. Yeah. They, they're at the fair right by Sweet Martha's where I used to work, and I used mm. to eat there all the time. They had a Dino's on campus. I think it's gone now. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. They're in a weird... It's like off of Snelling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. R.I.P. It's R.I.P. R.I.P. It's in Coon Rapids. There is one in Coon Rapids. Is there? Yeah, yeah. Um, God, we had one more thing. I forget. Tom, talk talk about the membership. Yeah, it's uh, once again, <laughs> you can get our draft content. We're going to have some premium content on the site, not just for the Vikings, but for the other Minnesota teams. It will be video um, as well as written content. You get a shirt. You get a Buffalo Wild Wings $5 card. You also get a free My Burger. Their stuff is really good if you haven't tried it out yet. Um, and we are going to do custom shirts. We're not quite there yet, but we will have some fun stuff for the machine for the other podcasts. Um yeah, and obviously we 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 would love your feedback, and it's a way for us to um, start a newsletter program, kind of get our best content in front of you on a daily basis, weekly, whatever. Now, uh, just to wrap things up, uh, give me the one guy that you're standing on the table for for the Vikings. Yeah, let's say top 100. So first three rounds. Oh, I say win. that's your boy. That's my boy. Oh, well, Lamar Jackson was. <sighs> Right. My, my, ah, my man. It, it'll be tough. It's going to be so hard to see. I, I, I'm worried that Isaiah Wynn will go top 15. He could easily oh, go yeah. top 20. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. Um, okay, a realistic guy that I would love if he's still there. I mean, he could be gone, but, like, he could s- easily still be there, too. Maurice Hurst. Yeah. I know we got Sheldon. I want some depth. We lost Tom Johnson. We lost Shamar Stephan. Give me a rotation of Sheldon, mm. Maurice Hurst, Linval, Jaleel Johnson, um, I would love that. And then go get one of the guards we talked about in the second round. Yeah, because I think um, D-tackle, also running back, like that could be a surprise pick. He's like, oh, well, we're deep there. But I mean, Sheldon could be a one and done. Uh, yeah. Latavius Murray, since he redid his deal, could be one and done as right. well. And then all of a sudden, you're sort of thin there. But, but again, we're not deep at D-tackle. Mm. D-end, though, with yeah. Weatherly and Bauer, I'm fine. D-tackle, yeah. that worries me a little bit. What if Linfall got hurt? Shrewd. Uh, we got Jaleel. Hello. 
I mean, even if Everson gets hurt, I mean, right, I, I, right. I, I, no doubt there's going to be a drop off, but at yeah. least we have Weatherly and Bauer yeah. to just do something. We'll see. I, I, I'm kind of torn because uh, uh, Moho, as yeah, yeah. Uh, as mm-hmm. as we refer to each other, because mm-hmm. we're, we're pretty you tight. We're, we're pretty tight. Close. We love yeah, Moho. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Phenomenal talent uh, at a position of need, especially since the platoon method. I mean, come on, let's yep. just go. Let's go. Uh, I like Will Hernandez. I like Austin Corbett in the second round. Yep. I mean, Billy Price is still a dude. Um, right again, now. I think he fits more of a cover three-ish, mm-hmm. but um, Isaiah Oliver from Colorado would be yep. fun. Long, big, lanky. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Also, yeah, that Ragnow kid. Ragnow's legit. Yeah. I mean, that's we talk about Corbett a lot in the second. Yeah. I think the dream is r- Ragnow there mm-hmm. in the second. Somewhat realistic, we're talking. Like he yeah. could easily be there in the second. That's about his sweet spot. That run where those interior guys are going to go. All right. So say the Vikings don't go a line at thirty and at sixty-two, Ragnow and Corbett are just sitting right. there no. chilling. Got Frankie. I like Yinka. Frankie, the uh, local boy. I'm, I'm I'm a Minnesota guy. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Really good. Tom, what about you? Who, really good. Who's the one guy that you're... I want to wrap this up because third period is starting for the Wild and the Wolves are at halftime. I don't have a player. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I do not. Uh, the correct answer <laughs> Baker is... Baker Mayfield. The correct answer is Kumayende. <laughs> yes, yes. No matter what. Yes, yes. That's who I stand the, on the table for. <laughs> uh, have they... Has this agent, like, lined out, like, what's the potentially highest, like, he could go? Yeah, I mean... Uh, Mostly seventh round undrafted yep. type guy. Yeah, that's what he's his like, agent. His what if he was Mister Irrelevant? He could that, that would be, be sick, sweet, dude. Those, he did talk about because those would go down in history. Dude. Yeah, because that uh, would be he talked about it on Andy's show. Is like getting drafted and even in the seventh round is still a good thing because that's you have the potential for signing signing bonus. Mm-hmm. Um, you got drafted. You got drafted. That's the sixth thing ever. Yeah. But there's a lot of great stuff though. Don't tell him to get discouraged if he doesn't. Oh no, he, a lot of great stuff to be able to pick your own team. Yeah, exactly. That's huge. Uh, what's coming up from you guys? What are you working on this week? We're finishing um, the rest of these videos. Check it out on the uh, premium subscription, Zone Coverage Premium Subscription Service. That should be up in the next few days. Check that out. Three bucks a month. Can't beat it. 25 for the year. Get some freebies, beat ups, uh, burger, gift cards, and some other stuff. Potential event at Ford the Draft. You can come join us. Kind of go pick by pick. Get mm-hmm. your guys' insight. Yep, absolutely. But a lot of great videos. you got to check this uh, stuff out on ZoneCoverage.com. Yank, how about you? Yeah, I finally have a weekend off this weekend, so I'm definitely going to be doing a lot of digging in, obviously, some of the top round guys, you know, create my top five per position, and then, you know, try to get into the meat of the draft. Some of those, you know, fourth, fifth, sixth round guys that, you know, Vikings should start looking at targeting. For sure. Andy? No, just kidding. You're going to play a lot of Fortnite. Yeah. yeah Fortnite. <laughs> Fortnite. I actually don't own Fortnite at all. It's uh, free. Is it? It's free. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah, and then you have to buy something in order to get skins uh, and all that. Is, that, oh, the, free, is that the loot boxes uh, controversy? There are not, as far as I know, there are not loot boxes in the game. However, I've not played it a ton. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Listen to Hour One. Shows available on iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, zocoverage.com, slash machine. But for Luke and Yinka and Tom, I'm Andy Sadano. Sorry, bro. Sorry, bro.